uh, testing audio, testing movement. One more check. Okay, and we are good. Hello everyone, this is Gun the Mace, aka John Hooper. I'm here with my streaming of Rebellion Secret Game Second Stage. Last time we left off, we finished off Episode A, The First Route. And with that, we have unlocked e Episode B, Bloody Rave, The Second Route. Just a forewarning for anyone who, um, didn't see all of the, um, didn't see all of Episode A, um, Episode B um, automatically spoils several things from Episode A from the very start, so if you haven't seen all of Episode A, uh, I highly recommend you go back and finish that first before watching this. But yeah, with that out of the way, uh, let's begin. Even now, she still remembered that day from time to time. She'd been wearing a tank top, so it'd probably been the summer. Come with us now. The married couple Harna had met with many a time by that point said those words and placed a hand on her shoulder as they stood before the Storm Grey Orphanage. Their voices were, were, were full of kindness. But feeling something wasn't right, feeling something was unnatural, Harlan frankly turned around. With Harlan being the little girl she was at the time, she, have ha she had a habit of running to her big brother whenever something happened, be it good, bad, or troubling. And in those times, her brother Shuhei would always come to her aid. On that day, Shuhei just stood rude in place. Big brother? Haruna, this is goodbye. Huh? You're going to leave this place and live with the Hosotanis. Remember what you told me? You say you liked Mr. and Mrs. Hosotani because they were nice people, right? Yeah. So from now on, he won't be a Fujita, but a Hosotani. You're gonna be the Hosotani's daughter now. Their daughter? Right. Hosotani-san's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母は、Haruna's父母
Shuhei bowed his head. And with that, a large hand tried to leave, lead Haruna off. Haruna stared at Shuhei with betrayal in her eyes. Why? Do you hate me now? Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! I don't get it! You're not making any sense! Brother, I don't want to leave you. Haruna, Haruna I'm sorry. Then Bok to Ishuni Tara, Kito Haruna made a man in her. But if I went with you, then you'd end up just like me. So, the distance between the siblings grew wider and wider until Haruna was eventually put in the car. The door shut after Harna got in, as if to um, drive a divide between their worlds. Bye bye, Harna! Bye, Harna! Be happy! Harna could see Shuhei waving goodbye with tears in his eyes. Though his face was wrinkled with tears, he still forced a smile. That was the last time Haruna saw her brother. It wasn't until a significant time later that the Hosotanis told her that they'd been planning on adopting Shuhei along with her. But Shuhei himself has stubbornly refused. As for why, he never once told the Hosotanis. At first, Haruna feared it was because he'd grown up, he'd grown fed up with taking care of her. But ten years later, Haruna found she could understand Shuhei's decision. He'd likely been trying to bear the burden of the cursed Fujita name all by himself and set his sister free from its curse. Much like Haruna these days desperately prayed for her family's happiness. Day 1 So don't worry about a thing, brother. Big brother. I'll be happy soon enough. With that, though, I want to return from the stirrings of her past to the game right in front of her. The PDA number she'd been assigned to for her final game was 3. Her clear condition was injure three or more players. Naturally, she knew her first stage clear condition was nothing more than a farce. However, she didn't have the choice of ignoring it. Unlike regular players, repeaters are required to fulfill their first stage clear conditions prior to the second stage. That was one of the handicaps assigned to repeaters like herself. Meaning if someone were to die by accident at that very moment, Harvinus Collar will almost certainly detonate. It 
and since the rule only applied to repeaters, Arden had to get to work from the very start of the game. So she'd already begun tailing another player. However, just then, her redhead mark stopped dead in her tracks. Daddy. Who's there? You're there, aren't you? Come out. Though she was a bit surprised when her mark turned around, Haruna wasted no time in holding her breath. It seemed her target had sharp perception, much akin to an animal's. <sighs> God's sake. The girl sighs she glared into the forest. Her ever alert eyes were, were like that of a proud wolf's. And just then. Why? The redhead's eyes darted to her pocket. She must have gone careless and thought her PA was off. The same thing had happened to Haruna once before. The PDAs were designed to automatically turn on whenever they received an email. No exceptions. For those who didn't want their PDA to beep, they just had to turn down the volume. Haruna seized her chance and rushed out of the bushes. The redhead swiftly got into a fighting stance. However, her side was wide open. Haruna ran up to the redhead and landed a clean kick on her. Her shin was met with firm resistance. Her target really had been well trained, it seemed. <laughs> Why you? <laughs> her opponent's counterattack was swifter than expected. Nevertheless, Haruna calmly invaded the redhead's punch. However, <laughs> Her opponent launched a kick straight at Haruna's face with a roar. Face of no other choice, Haruna guarded with her arms and put all her way into a, into a kick of her own. Chills and sweat ran down Haruna's spine. Though their fighting style was a bit too her fighting style was a bit too aggressive, her opponent was strong. No one could argue against that. Just then, the redhead finally managed to put some distance between herself and Haruna, keeping a close eye on the latter. Not wasting a second. Haruna took that chance leaving to the grove next to her. She ran as fast as her legs could take her, weaving through the trees. Uh, oh, hey! Haruna ignored the voice behind her. Five minutes have passed since Haruna's scuffle. She hid behind the tree and checked and took out her PDA. She operated and the encounter information about the redhead soon appeared on screen. So her player number is Jack, huh? 
Part of the special function was show a list of all player encounters. It wouldn't help for a clear condition, but she could use it to keep an eye on the Jack's actions from now on. I can't tell if she's a repeater or not, but it seems to be best to watch out for her. Just when Haruna tried to turn on for special function, a new encounter was suddenly added. <laughs> what? 4.45 a.m. 3 and 9. Encounter in Area 7. Just then, someone came out from the bushes behind Haruna. You there. Don't move. Hey, hold it! Nimble footsteps chase after Haruna. Harden looked over his shoulder and caught a glimpse of an ink black shadow. When was the last time she ever let someone in this game get behind her so easily? It was clear that the shadow possessed remarkable strength. Harden the panther and she ran at breakneck speed. But no matter how fast she ran, she couldn't put any distance between herself and the shadow. <laughs> she was running out of breath, yet her pursuer's footsteps so no showed no signs of letting up. Unless Haruna came up with a plan, she'd be caught soon. As Haruna looked for a place she could let her pursuer run past her, she turned on the curve in the mountain trail and was suddenly greeted with a cliff on the left side of the trail. <laughs> Harvinder fell, flew off the cliff in a flash. She wasn't aiming for the bottom. She managed to grab hold of the edge of the cliff just before she fell. She took a deep breath and held it in, ignoring the raging of her heart. And a few seconds later... Did she get away? You think I, of all people, would be shaken off so easily? It seems my usual ways won't serve me in this game. But mark my words, Akira. You will be avenged, I swear it. And the girl left the cliffside of those words. Haruna had heard everything from under the cliff. Revenge, huh? <laughs> I think she's another player that the administrator is intentionally allowed to participate, but I don't think she's a repeater. There weren't that many reasons for those called repeaters to play this game over and over again. Most of them were in for the prize money like Haruna, or to satisfy some off-color desires. But a move like Revenge made it highly likely that this was the girl's first game. Revenge was something you basically only did once after all. She said Akira, didn't she? But Harmona didn't recognize that name. That said, she couldn't say for sure that she hadn't killed a player by the name up until that point. Kill at least 10 players or so without knowing their names after all. Sheesh. First that redhead and now this. Well, 
Well, LeBron's starting position. Guess the administrators really don't want me surviving this one. Well, not like it matters. A handicap like this was knowing for someone who already survived eight games like herself. Power on the side and try to climb up the cliff. Just then, she sensed someone approaching the bottom of the cliff. Could they be any more blatant? Haruna hurried up the cliff. Even she was starting to get annoyed with the constant onslaught of players. But at that moment, the rock she was holding onto crumbled. <coughs> By the time Haruna realized what was about to happen, it was too late. She quickly managed to grab onto a tree root, and moments later, she heard a young man's voice at the bottom of the cliff. <gasps> Thus, Haruna was reunited with her brother Shuhei for the first time in 10 years. Something stung at his arm and the back of his neck. Though he wanted to sleep a little longer, he couldn't stand it anymore. He turned over in his sleep, but it didn't make him any more comfortable. Now irritated beyond all hell, Masaki Kurokawa opened his heavy eyelids. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell? Huh? The hell? The fuck's going on here? He stood up as he violently brushed off the dry leaves and gravel sticking to his arm. He looked around to find himself in a dark forest. All you could see were trees, grass, fallen leaves, and dirt. The air reeked with the unfamiliar scent of the woods. Where the hell am I? God damn it. This doesn't make any sense. Why the fuck am I so dirty? I just got out of the bath, didn't I? Just then, his memory started finally coming back to him. Huh? That's right. I finished my bath, left the bathhouse, and... Masaki Kurokawa, I presume. Someone had called out to him as he was walking toward a nearby vending machine. Huh? Huh? Where the hell are you? Kurokawa turned around to find a man in the suit. The man pointed something at Kurokawa and fired it into him. A second later, everything went white. That was the last thing Kurokawa remembered. He'd likely been shot of a taser. After that, he must have been tanked to these woods while passed out. Get grabbed so fucking easy. God damn it. Was it those Garumu boys I fought the other day? 
was those dumb Asuna shits I'd be up a month ago. Nah, there's no way they'd have the balls to do something like this. Anyway, why the hell didn't they tie me up? And it don't look like I'm all that hurt either. this something had been shoved into his pocket Kurokawa took it out and found unfamiliar PDA the tiny LED was flashing curious Kurokawa tried pressing a button huh? an email Explanation of the basic rules? The hell's this? Crow Call opened the P the open email to find six rules written there. Okay, oh just basically rerun the rules last time. One each player has their own PDA, and they must fulfill their own clear condition by the end of the game. And the game's end time will be announced 24 hours in advance. Uh, players are not allowed to be separated from their PDAs for more than three hours, which means they can't be more than one meter away from their PDA. Uh, players are not allowed to remove, remove their collars. Oops. Alright. And the game... The game's playing field has been divided in multiple areas and players are not allowed to leave the designated playing field. The game has multiple players. And while players are free to take and use other players' PDAs, they can only clear the game by filling the clear condition of the PDA that was given to them at the start. And if a PDA's original owner is eliminated from the game, their PDA will become unusable. Oops, sorry again. Right, and um, players can do whatever they want so long as it doesn't conflict with the rules. And they'll be disqualifying their collar will detonate if they break the rules or fail their condition. The fuck? What collar? <sighs> Guess they mean this. Crow collar brought his hand to his neck and was greeted by the cold sensation of metal. Though he couldn't see it, it appeared it really was a collar. God damn it. Whatever dumb shit did this went way over the top. Like hell, I'd piss my pants over a bluff like this. Krokar wrapped his fingers between the gap in his collar and neck and pulled all his might. Vibrations have been detected in your collar. Please let go of your collar right away. Oh, shit! Did I fuck up? Huh? At that moment, Kuro Kawa noticed his PDA was displaying the same warning. It seemed it was linked to his collar. This would have cost way too much for a toy. So they weren't kidding about blowing up? Guess this is for real. And I'm a player? On the fucking joke. Listen up. I don't know who the fuck you are, but I'll play a little game for now. Done. However. Once this is over, you can kiss your sorry ass goodbye. 
Pearl Call walked into the woods, wallowing at rage with those who'd set up this unjust game. A strange silence hung over the conference room where the briefing would soon begin. This really does feel like, um, just the way it does before the shooting of a TV show. Hatsune Otoda surveyed the other four players in the room with that thought in mind. All of them were surely trying to comprehend their current plight to the best of their abilities. Hatsune still hadn't said a word to any of them. If this were a studio, Hatsune would have been trying to remember her script, or the lyrics in the case of a stage wing. But she even had no script or lyrics this time. So Hasane chose to remember the email she received half an hour ago. This is an important message for the participants. A list of rules was sent out earlier, but as luckily that alone was not enough to clear all your doubts and questions. Therefore, you'll be holding a briefing um, to explain matters to you. The briefing will be held at the village's central control facility, so we kindly ask that all players interested in attending gather in the white building at the northeast end of the village. Furthermore, this briefing is not mandatory. There will be no penalty to players who do not attend. As she reflected over those sentences, Hatsune's thoughts turned to what was to come next. Judging from the camera set up in the room in the forest, perhaps this was all part of some TV project. If that were the case, Hasani found strange there were no other celebrities there. Besides, she didn't think her manager, that is to say her mother, would ever approve of violent means such as knocking her out with a stun gun and bringing her here. And could this really be? Just as Hasani denied the suspicions that crept into her mind, the young man sang diagonally across from her opened his mouth. Uh, for God's sakes, I'm suffocating over here. Hey guys, we're all players here, so I get you're nervous, but given the cold shoulders, no way to go about it. Can we, like, talk about something? Doesn't look like that breathing's starting anytime soon, after all. A young woman who had been wearing a grim face the whole time broke the silence next. Like what? Anything. You know, like, uh, oh, I know. Why don't we introduce ourselves? Introduce ourselves? I mean, we're all going to be playing this game together, yeah? That means we're all in the same boat, so we should take a chance to at least learn each other's names. The girl sitting against the wall nodded that suggestion. Yeah. You've got a good point. It must have been some kind of fate that brought us all together here. That's what I believe, anyway. Fate, huh? A boy with fair features by the window sighed of exasperation. Just like Hasune, he was a student of Kishida Academy, but unfortunately she didn't recognize him. Oh, come on, there's no harm in it, is there? I suppose you're right. Okay, now I'll get this party started. Oh, 
I'm Daisuke Ito from Second Tokai Academy. Nice to meet ya. Okay guys, one after another. I guess I'm next then. I'm Mariko Ueno. I go to Joshin Academy. My name is Kotomi Fukishi. I'm from Seiyo Academy. Second Tokai, Joshin, Seiyo. So all from the same city, are we now? Oi, oi. Hey, don't skip yourself. Oh, my apologies. I'm Tsukasa Mitsubayashi. I'm from Kishida Academy. Alright, it's your turn now. Oh, I... Uh... Asuna stumbled over her words. She didn't know where she should go by her real name, Atoda, or her stage name, Ando. What's wrong? You're the last one, you know. You don't intend to be the only one who holds their name, do you? Uh, I'm, uh, um, I'm... Hey now, hold your horses, guys. Give us some space to breathe, why don't you? You don't need to worry about it. This is like a hot air balloon. And you don't have to rush yourself, you hear? We're just killing time here. Yes. Thank you, Daisuke-san. Okay. Thank you, Ido. You don't need to do three. No need to be so formal. Just Daisuke is fine. So, what's your name? Something Ko? It seems Daisuke hadn't realized Hasune was a performer. Once she realized that, Hasune decided to be her true self. I'm Hatsune. Hatsune Atoda. Soka! Hatsune Chanka! Yaroshkuna! I see, so it's Hatsune, is it? Nice to meet you. Hi! Yaroshkuna no desu, Daisuke! Yes, nice to meet you too, Daisuke. When, da when Hatsune nodded, she heard footsteps coming down the hall. Has someone come to explain things to us? Oh! Oh, this is this finally time? If it is, I swear I'm going to give him a piece, such a piece of my mind. You think so? I don't think it's them, personally. Huh? Why? If you, don't if you don't know, then don't concern yourself with it. Hey. Quit lording it over us. Oi, oi, kenka suru na te. Na, Hatsune chan. Come on, guys, you shouldn't fight, right, Hatsune? Hai desu. Daisuke no yu tori, kenka wa yoku nai desu. Yeah, Daisuke's right. Fighting's not good. Wakata. All right. Sate to, sonja, oni ga deru ka, ja ga deru ka. Okay, let's find out what's behind door number one. Daisuke looked at the door. Hasune watched on with bait breath. Finally, the door opened. Nanda? Ah, Mata Sankashaka. Huh? Oh, more players, huh? A young man and woman with collars just like the others came in.
Harvin the Hosotani's chance came shortly after the seven players in the conference room had introduced themselves. We're grateful to all those present for taking the time taking the trouble to gather here. Henceforth, allow me to start the briefing regarding this game. Everyone's attention was drawn to the speaker on the ceiling. Harmonus seized the chance to slip out of the conference room. First, I should give you a general explanation of the game. Here, I will tell you about the game's goal, time limit, stage, players, and PDAs. I will answer any questions you have about the game itself. Harwinder could faintly hear the administrator's voice on the other side of the closed door. She stood in the hallway for a while, straining her ears, but fortunately no one seemed to have noticed her departure. So it really is you, big brother. Harvinda whispered that name she hadn't uttered in ten years, her heart pounding as she remembered the voice of the young man who had been traveling with her just a little while ago. She already realized that um, he was her long-lost brother by the time he gave her his full name. At the same time, she also understood why the managers had cast her in the role of the main heroine for this game. get moving. Countless tragedies have unfolded over and over again in this game. She couldn't save Shuhei any longer. She'd already gotten him mixed up in this as it was. But just as Harunda turned to leave, Oh? It would seem one of the players has already left. Are you sure we should continue the briefing? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, he's right! Harun has gone! The administrator's statement caused commotion in the conference room. Disgusted by the administrator's blatant attempts to shine the spotlight directly on her, Harunda hastily fled the central control facility. She ran to the woods and immediately began her search for cubes. She acted as dispassionately as possible to keep the circumstances of her bungled escape from getting to her. Quickly found the cube in the shade of a tree, used the memory chip inside, and made her way to the spot marked on the PDA. She dug up the area using a fallen tree branch, and along with an aluminum can containing food and water, she found a weapon wrapped in plastic. Crossbow, huh? She lifted it up to get a feel for it. It weighed about a kilogram or so. It seemed it wasn't the kind where you turned the handle and tugged on the bowstring, but one where you put, put the bar in front at level of your feet and tugged with both hands. It appeared to have a horizontal shooting range of about 15 meters. If shot in an arch, it could probably shoot arc, it could probably shoot farther, though it severely lower its accuracy. 
It wasn't as good as a gun, no matter how one spun it. If there were any advantages, it was that it didn't produce any gunshot or muzzle flash, and it was suitable for sniping. The administrators must really want to, want to see me suffer. All I'm going to complain is that the crossbow had planned for her from the very beginning. But grumbling wouldn't solve anything. In order to test it out right away, Harvina brought the bar at level of her foot, tugged the bowstring, and loaded an arrow. She lifted the bow slightly above her chest and got into a firing stance. When she did, she found that the rear and front sights were lined up perfectly, almost like they'd been made for her. Looks like it handles just fine. But I better fine tune the sights just to be safe. Haruna took aim at a tree trunk about 20 meters away. Just when she was about to pull the trigger. Not anywhere, do you? No. I know I saw her entering these woods. After turning toward the voice and seeing two shadows be between the trees about 25 meters away, Harvin would swiftly be hid behind a tree. But the footsteps only grew closer every each second. Who is it? Harvin anxiously peeked out from behind the tree and saw. Brother and Kotomi? But why? The briefing shouldn't be over yet, right? Don't tell me they followed after me. It was all the administrators doing. If he hadn't spoken up when he did, Shuhei wouldn't have noticed Harvin was gone so it was too late for him to even entertain the idea of looking for her. Yet here he was. He even skipped out on the all-important briefing for newcomers like himself to look for her. You can't be doing this, big brother. If you get too folk if you get too focused on me, this game will eat you alive. <laughs> Shuhei and Komi froze surprise when Haruna jumped out with the crossbow in hand. But Haruna just mercilessly pulled the trigger. <laughs> Let me scream shook the nearby leaves. Harwin's arrow grazed Shuhei's right hand, leaving a red streak behind. Blood oozed from the torn skin. Harwin, why? He's right. We just came here to find you. So why did you do that? Shuhei, this is a warning. You saved my life, so I'll spare you this time. But remember, this game's already begun. You won't get off so easy next time. Leaving with that warning, Harvina turned around and ran into the woods. Wait, Harvina! No. 
and the voices calling out for her soon fade into the woods. But the recoil of the crossbow firing at Shuhei still lingered clearly in their hands. This is strange. Just firing at them alone should have been a warning enough, so why did I... Why did you show yourself to them? She was going to survive this game and live happily with the Hosotanis. That was supposed to be her whole goal, and yet... Pop of doubt over her unbecoming actions, despite her becoming a repeater for that whole reason. Harna became careless of her surroundings. Hey you, stop right there! <laughs> All of a sudden, the owner of the jack appeared right in her path. With her crossbow currently unloaded, Harna didn't want to get into an up-and-front fight of a competent fire like this girl. Thus, she sped up. <laughs> no, I'm not letting you go this time. The Jack smirked fearlessly and got into a fighting stance. She was getting closer and closer. But a moment before they were due to make contact, Harna turned her body slightly. She had slipped right past the Jack. Huh? What? Uh, Come on, really? Harna kept running away as fast as she could while the girl shouted with disbelief. Her brother's face flashed through her mind. Harwinda bit her lip, cursing her carelessness. Sweat traveled down, um... Sweat traveled down his back, soaking into his tank top that stuck to his skin. Masuki Kuroka was still prowling through the woods. Irritated by that sensation. God damn it. Where the hell is that village? Krokaw had woken up in the southwestern part of the field. So he assumed he could just get to the central control facility by heading northeast. But seemed to have gone lost in this labyrinth of trees at some point. <laughs> Fuck these woods and whoever planned them. Speaking of which, who the fuck set up this dumbass circus anyhow? How much money would you even need to set up shit like this? Not even a fucking billionaire could afford this crap. You guys are all sitting nice and cozy with a champagne glass in their hands you watch this shit, ain't ya? God fucking damn it! I wanna kill you fuckers right now! You're gonna pay for making a punk out of me! There are only two other times where Crow Cobb had made such a fool of. The more he thought about them, the more he raged. Just then, he heard something like static. Curious, he listened carefully and the sound cleared. That's 
sound. There must be a river nearby. Totally. Perfect. I'm dying of thirst over here anyway. Guess I'll pay a visit. Kuroka walked toward the sound. Before long, the murmuring in the stream grew louder and louder. The air also felt a little more moist. Seeking the water, Kuroko instinctively picked up his pace. And just as he finally caught a glimpse of the sparkling water. Oh jeez, you're walking way too fast. You won't have to follow me. Why are you being so mean? I'm not being mean. I'm just going off on my own, that's all. What the hell? Kuroko stared between the trees and spotted a young man and girl at the riverbank. They appeared to be the two he just heard. <laughs> what do you know? Looks like things are finally looking up. Kuroko would chuckle and head, head through the woods to the riverbank. Kuroko's clear condition was obtain the PDA, uh, possess the PDAs of three or more players who've cleared their condition, excluding the Joker. He didn't know what the Joker was. But whatever the case, that meant he had to make at least three other players submit to him by force and obey him. About goddamn time I found some other players. Hey, you guys, did you go with that briefing thing? If so, tell me what they told you. I got lost, so I missed the whole thing. Huh? Wait a sec, are you? Kuroko was stopped. He recognized the young man. His lungs filled with boundless humor. <laughs> Holy crap, are you shitting me? What are the fucking odds of this? What are you talking about? Who is this guy? <laughs> oh man, this is the first time in ages I believe in the god. <laughs> I thought this was some fucked up shit. My son got grabbed and thrown into this game. But maybe this ain't so bad after all. Kuroka cut himself off there, bent a nearby tree branch, and spoke decisively. Answer me. You're Akinori Majima of Tokai Academy number two, ain't ya? And if I am? Die! Though the girl screamed, Majima lightly dodged the, tr the branch Kuroka threw at him like it was nothing. Something in Kuroka's head snapped at that moment. The humor that briefly possessed him went back to where it came from. He filled all his muscles with strength. Oi, Majima! Hey Majima, do you have any fucking idea how long I've been waiting for this chance? Do ya? 
Who in the world are you? Well, yeah, no shit, of course not. I bet I didn't leave even the slightest impression on you, did I? Man, no, this is embarrassing. Nothing less than the mighty Majima. My name is Masaki Kurokawa. Burn into your goddamn brain. For you and I have a score to settle. I'm gonna fucking kill ya! Kurokawa charged at Majima, driven by that sole thought. But his fist only swung through air. <laughs> What followed was a one-sided beatdown in Majima's favor. Son of a bitch! <laughs> and top it all off, the coolest girl tried to stop the fight. Just stop it already! <laughs> what was that? I mean, you can't beat Majima, can you? Furthermore, Majima looked down on him without the slightest care. Do you have any goddamn idea how much I crawled after that? Throwing that blood over and over again? Not my problem. If anything, I'd say your grudge is rather unwarranted. And when he launched the strongest punch in his life, fueled by his boiling blood. <laughs> God damn it! Don't you make a fucking joke out of me! Marching my counter like it was nothing. At that moment, everything went white. And a moment, another moment later, he fell backward into a thicket. Kurokawa was on the verge of passing out, but he still managed to hear a shrill voice. <laughs> what the? Flying back the pain, Kurokawa opened his eyes to find a weak-looking boy with glasses. The hell? Who are you? Hey, wait, hold on! Don't you fucking run away from me, you bastard! Kurokawa grabbed the boy by the back of his neck before he could get away and dragged him right up to his face. It was then Krokov noticed the boy was holding something. Huh? Hey, what have you got there? Oh, this is... The hell? What the fuck are you trying to hide? Krokov headbutted the boy, causing him to drop the object. Huh? Masaka. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Ain't this a... Lying on the ground... ...was a revolver shining dully in the sunlight. A Colt Python. Hey, you're not gonna tell me this is just some BB gun now, are you? <laughs> Kurokov clicked his tongue in the irritation of the boys floundering and picked up the revolver. When he did, a mesmerizing weight passed through his shoulder and froze his internal organs. Kurokov's lips curved into a smirk. <laughs> 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 
中本物だっつうのかよ What the hell? This shit's the real fucking deal now, ain't it? おいメガネこいつに弾入ってるんだ Hey, glasses The thing loaded 弾は入ってんのかって聞いてんだろうよ Are you fucking deaf? I asked you a goddamn question Kurokawa thrust the muzzle right into the boy's chin and let, uh, uh, let loose a scream that echoed through the woods. <laughs> Fucking hell, don't scream my ear, you piece of shit! <laughs> Your reaction was all the proof I needed. Thinks actually the real McCoy. With this baby on my side, I'm the best in Majima will stand a chance. Kurokawa wrapped his left hand around the revolver's grip and left the thicket, dragging the boy with his right hand. Majima and the girl were staring at them in confusion. What's this? Oi, Lajiba. You better run while you still can, Majima. Huh? It's not even your match for this. The roar of delight. Kurokawa pointed his cold python at Majima. No way! What is that thing? A gun? No way! The thing can't be real, right? Oh, trust me, it's quite real. Let me show you. Kurokawa raised the firing hammer and casually pulled the trigger. <coughs> the bullet knocked back a pebble on Majima's feet, scattering yellow sparks. Kurokawa's blood, flesh, and bones trembled from the recoil. <laughs> that sensation gave me the chills. You bastard. Oh no. I'd say the tables have turned, wouldn't you? Any last words? Hmm? Where'd you get that? He's the one who had it. Ask him. Kurokawa thrust his cold python right at the boy with glasses. I dug it out of the ground! Dug it out? There's no fucking way something like this was buried in the ground! It was, I swear! I found it using something called a memory chip! Majima's complexion changed when he heard the words memory chip. Kuroko knows inside the milk it for all was worth. Well now, you hear that? You got this using something called a memory chip. That was quite enlightening, wouldn't you say, Majima? Yeah. Okay. Now that you've gotten your souvenir for hell, ready to die.
Majima didn't even bother hiding the panic rising to his face when Kurokawa turned the gun to him. Kurokawa began squeezing the trigger, his heart dancing with glee. Adios, Majima. You were a dirty little bastard to the very end. Oh no, where the fuck do you think you're going? The way your eyes dart around me, it's totally obvious. You think everyone knows that shit? What? Did I embarrass you as a boxer? In that case, you're welcome. Now I can finally pay that bastard back. Filled with boundless rapture, Kuroko was slowly filled his trigger finger with strength. Please wait! Uh, it's cowardly to bring out a gun when you've already lost, isn't it? Uh, the hell? That's right! You're a coward, Kurokawa! Coward. The moment the girl uttered that word, all of Kurokawa's thoughts ground to a halt. <laughs> the fuck did you just call me, you goddamn bitch? Kurokawa gave into his anger, turning the gun from Majima to the girl. Majima didn't waste that chance. <laughs> What the? Majima's right hook slammed directly into Kurokawa's left cheek. Kurokawa's vision went blurry again. He was knocked back into the bushes once more, dragging the boy with glasses along with him. God damn it, you bastard! Ogihara, let's go! Huh? Oh, right! Wait, I'm coming with. Kurokawa's vision was swaying, so he couldn't shoot the retreating girl in Majima. However, he managed to grab the boy in the back of the neck. And let you get away, little shit. Oh god. Why me? The boy's shrill voice rocked Majima's brain. Uh Kurokawa's brain, sorry. Kurokawa snarled with irritation, displeasure, and pointed his revolver at the boy of glasses. Listen up, you pussy. You're in the cough up every little fucking thing you know. Otherwise, I'm gonna bust a hole in your punk ass. Okay, I will run, and I'll tell you everything I know. So please don't point that gun at me. Okay, sure. Kurokawa lowered the gun, feeling a bit exhausted. He looked around, but didn't see Majima anywhere. Even if he went after him now, he doubted he'd find him. But the game had only just begun. Now that he gained a slave in the form of this boy, he was one step closer to understanding its workings.
One second, taking a quick drink break. Okay, back. Meanwhile, around the same time Kurokawa began traveling with Mitsuru Shiosaki, the boy of glasses. Tsukasa Mitsubayashi, who had decided to work separately from Daisuke and the others, returned to the conference room after they all left. He headed for the center of the room as he organized everything he'd learned from the briefing. Filling your clear condition is the goal of the game. Every player has different conditions. Among them are those who will fail unless they can carry out a certain task. If you fail to fulfill your clear condition within the time limit or it becomes impossible to do so, you lose and your collar detonates. The caller's blast rays isn't enough to harm others, isn't large enough to harm others, but it will fatally wound the, we the wearer. The callers are de designed to sound an alarm once they are activated and detonate 10 seconds later. Players will be informed when there are only 24 hours left in the game. Players are basically free to do whatever they want if it means winning the game. Alright, I think I've got a good grasp on the basics. Now then. Discuss a glance at cleaning tool bin in the corner of the room. He decides to ignore it for the time being and turn towards the speaker. Administrator, you're still there, aren't you? I have some more questions about the game. May I? Scuttle merely asks a formality. A second later, he heard the sound of a microphone switching on through the speaker. By all means, ask. I knew it. Tsukasa smirked mentally, but kept it hidden and continued. I can't help but feel there was some information you failed to share during the briefing. Care to enlighten me? I fail to understand what you mean. Could you be more specific? There are two things I want to confirm. Is there a chance our clear conditions will change part way through? And is there a possibility you and your people intervene with the game? I think that's it. I wish to know what basis you have for believing that either of those are possible. The administrator's quiet voice was tinged with, was tinged with curiosity. Discuss a sigh of exasperation when he picked up on that. Never mind. I've got what I wanted. Asking me for my basis was all I needed to figure out your stance. The administrator let out a sound of bewilderment. You must not have expected Scott's answer. Now that he'd gotten the response he was after, Scott continued. You don't get it? 
You, an administrator, just intervened with the game by asking a player like me for my reasoning. Which means the game's rules are meaningless, aren't they? You can just can't change the game's rules whenever and however you feel like it. Am I wrong? Yes, you are. Indeed. Scott said I've been fully aware this assertion didn't add up in the slightest. So he tried to act as discontent as possible when he responded. I'm wrong? How exactly? First, the sort of dialogue is based on a manual we made long ago. That manual includes a section on how to respond when someone like you asks referring questions. Oh really? And? When I asked you for your reasoning earlier, I was merely trying to appease you as according to our rules on how to answer questions as described in the manual. Hmm, is that so? But you're just twisting around your words, aren't you? We have no way of finding out if that so-called manual actually exists after all. That's... Oh, what's wrong? Is that one not in the manual? Scott could wager a guess as to the reason for the administrator's silence. A game like this must have cost, cost a fortune to set up. Sorry, a game like this that must have cost, cost a fortune to set up was likely made on the assumption many people will watch it. In other words, this was entertainment. There was no point to it if there was no amusement to be found. As such, Scott's declaration that the rules were meaningless would have killed the fun for the viewers, something the administrators couldn't have. Say, administrator, I'm not trying to cause trouble for you. I just want accurate information. Nothing more, nothing less. You can understand that, can't you? Very well. I'll answer your questions. Thank you. Let's start with my first question. About where the rules can be revised during the game, yes? To get straight to the point, yes. It's possible. That's limited to whether one of the players fulfills a certain condition. We're not the ones who pull the trigger. So, I see. And what would that condition be, if I may ask? I cannot answer that. Alright. And my second question? Please act on the assumption there will be essentially no intervention from the administrators. However, should unexpected circumstances present themselves, we will act to remedy them. Define unexpected circumstances. A situation not described in the manual, like this one. I see. May I ask one more question? Go ahead. Are there any players who know all the rules from the start? Yes, uh... 
the administrator abruptly cut himself short. He probably realized he'd said too much. When he finally resumed speaking, his voice was normally more cautious than before. Anything else? No, that's enough, I suppose. I see. Farewell, Mr. Mitsubayashi. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. We have high hopes for you. And with that, the mic turned off. The conference room was filled with the sound of static. Maybe I went a little too far? Now the administrators have promised they won't intervene so long as we don't go overboard. Well that said, it didn't change the fact that all the players were playing right into the administrator's hands, and Skasa was no exception. Keeping that in mind, Skasa made his way for the nearby door. Then he suddenly stopped, turned towards the player in the cleaning tools bin, and spoke. I'll be taking my leave now, Hitomi Kasuya. <laughs> the cleaning tools bin shook slightly. Skasa had learned her name through her special function. Having accomplished all his goals, Skasa left the conference room. When he left the control facility, he spotted Daisuke sticking a screwdriver in Hatsune's collar. Apparently he was trying to dismantle it. Are you sure about this? Mariko's looking really worried over there. Oh, come on, it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be su seeing surprise on her face instead soon enough. Daisuke licked his lips and put more strength into the screwdriver. But right then... Vibrations have been detected in your collar. Please let go of your collar right away. Whoa! The alarm went off! God damn it. So those bastards really did catch on. Of course they did. Didn't I tell you so? Oh, shut up. Says the one watching from safety and doing shit. Not doing shit. What was that? That's not at all what I was. Gusto sighed and sighted them, um, quarreling. <sighs> what a carefree bunch. It's almost like they think they're on a field trip. I was right not to go with them. Well, I thought there might be something special about that Fujita guy at first. But skipping out on the briefing for a single player? Such a letdown. Fukishi went right after him, so she's out of the question too. Skasa's clear condition was, over three players would fill their clear conditions at the time the game ends. So he'd been planning on teaming up with talented players on par with him, but his prospects weren't looking too good so far. Guess it'd be best to search by myself for now. His mind made off. Skasa snuck off into the forest.
After the sun rose, and many of the players were beginning to focus on finding memory chips, Haruna Hosotani activated her PDA special function and checked the player encounters for the umpteenth time. Player encounter information. 6.25 a.m. 5 and 7 and 8 in Joker. Encountered in Area 16. 8.50 a.m. Ace and 10 and Queen. Encountered in Area 14. 9.07 a.m. Ace and 10 and Queen. Encountered in Area 19. 9.10 a.m. 4 and 6. Encountered in Area 18. 18. So Big Brother's in Area 18 right now. Haruna was in Area 19, one area over to the east. What am I even doing? I don't have time for this, so why? The rules assessed to Haruna at the time were quite strict. Unless she fulfilled her first st stage clear condition soon, the second stage would come before she knew it, and her collar would explode. Yet here she was, prioritizing keeping a healthy distance between her and Shuhei over fulfilling her condition. Big brother, I don't understand myself. Even so, she turned toward Area 18, ready to take off again. Just then, she heard several voices up ahead. Hey, what were you doing? You're supposed to be back earlier. Just shut up already. So if I'm a little late, no need to throw a hissy fit over it. Those voices, they're not Shuhei and Kodomi. Haruna hid in the bushes and looked toward the voices. And what she saw was... A little? You're an, you're an hour late, you hear that? An hour! Mariko, Daisuke, calm down! I am calm. I'm just being loud because this guy's in try no, no matter how many times I tell him. Oh, so you're aware of it, are you? Then why not try shutting that mouth a little? You ever heard the story of the North Wind and the Sun? If I did shut up, you just get full of yourself, right? What about you? Have you ever heard of the broken windows theory? Of course I have. The one where if a broken window is left alone, eventually all the other windows will be broken, right? Don't think you're the only one with a brain here. Well, Rat, aren't you the one who's breaking the rules? We told you our clear conditions and special functions, yet you haven't told us squat. That's got nothing to do with this. Please stop fighting. Daisuke and Mariko were arguing in the middle of a mountain trail with no cover, while Hatsune did her best to pacify them. Haruna watched them from the bush. They were totally defenseless. There were about 17 meters between them and the bush Haruna was hiding in. There was nothing to get in the way of an arrow, and there wasn't much wind either.
Haruna quietly lifted her crossbow and aimed for Mariko's right leg. The torso was a much easier target, but if she screwed up and ended up fatally wounding Mariko, she would be signing her own death warrant. This is a little tricky. Harmona held her breath and pulled the trigger. A moment later, the arrow was fired from the bowstring, cleaved a straight path through the air, and then. <coughs> huh? Hmm? Mariko, you need to study this book. Mariko, what's wrong? I don't know. Someone just cut my leg. The arrow had sliced Mariko's shin, right where Haruna had aimed. Even from far away, she could tell it was bleeding heavily. What is this? Oh shit, are you kidding me? You were serious? This is bad, Hasune. If we don't get out of here, we'll be next. But, but Mariko's... Just run already. This way. No! Wait! Don't leave me! Daisuke took Hasane by the hand and ran off into the woods, with Mariko dragging her injured leg right behind them. <laughs> Judging from that, she shouldn't be in any moral danger. Haruna lowered her crossbow, reset the bowstring, and lowered a new arrow. Now I made for that made for two. If she, could just injure, if she could injure just one more person, her first stage clear condition would be fulfilled. For a moment, Harna thought about how nice it would be if the game just ended while still on the first stage. Even though she'd never had a game where the second stage had never been triggered. So that's it. I want both fake brother and I to survive this. I know I've killed so many players up to this point. I don't want to stand with me having to kill him, too. But would such an outcome even be allowed? No, definitely not. The administrators and all the people I've killed so far will never allow for such a selfish conclusion. Laura hung her head. Right after that. Cursing herself for dropping her guard yet again, Harmona immediately pointed her crossbow in the direction of the noise. But her finger froze on the trigger when she saw who was behind it. <laughs> Good. We finally found you. Don't move! Shuhei, who had been walking up to Haruna, came to a halt when he heard her warning. He was completely unarmed. If Haruna were to shoot him, he'd have no way of fighting back. Shuhei, 
私の前に姿を現したの。シュヘイ、Why'd you come back up to me when you don't even have a weapon? 私は警告したはずよ。今度は外さないって。何度も私は言っ I said you wouldn't get off so easy next time. So why? Shuhei wa. Jibun no inochi ga oshiku nai no. Do you not value your own life? Shuhei's eyes trembled slightly at Haruna's question, but he soon responded with a tribe or with a troubled smile. Just wa. Ore ni mo yoku wa akaranai mi da. Honestly, even I'm not so sure. Akaranai. You don't even know? Ah, yeah. Normally, I'd probably never be this reckless. But, I don't know why. Why? 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 No. This should be the first time we've ever met. I see. But in that case, why haven't you killed me? Huh? At that time, you didn't even kill me. But. You could have just killed me back then, but instead you chose to warn me. Nah, yappari ore dachi doko kade. I'm right, aren't I? We've met before. Should I try to approach Harmon as he said that? Harmon gripped her crossbow and thrust it forward. Konaide. Stay back. Please, don't get any closer to me. Haru. I'm now. My head is totally a total mess right now. I'm not the person I usually am. So please. Crossbow shook in Harmon's hands. Her trigger finger was still firm against the trigger. Harmon couldn't deny her true feelings any longer. She yearned to rekindle her relationship with the brother she'd lost ten years ago. But, but the administrators wanted to force the siblings to kill each other. They must have given them clear conditions that would force them to do just that once the second stage came along. In which case, it would be best to leave him and have her true identity remain forever a mystery to him. In her mind, Harvina understood all that, but her heart wasn't swayed so easily. Harvina. Shuhei took another. Try taking another step closer. Harmon's mind screamed in retaliation, and she felt her finger of more strength. Just then, the bushes behind Shuhei shook. I've got it, Shu. Her clear condition is injure three or more players. Haruna put the brakes on her trigger finger when she heard Kotomi. How did you know my clear condition? My PDA special function shows me the player number and clear condition of a PDA within 10 meters. So that's it. Kotomi, Haruna's player number is what? Kotomi, what's Haruna's player number? Give me a sec. Uh, it's three. 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 Three.
Susuko. Three. So she's a prime number, huh? Haruna, so we're going to kill you. Haruna, put that thing down. You don't have to worry about us doing anything. Huh? My clear conditions for all prime numbered players fulfill their conditions. So to win the game, I need you to fulfill your condition. All prime numbered players? So da. Ore to Haruna no clear jokin wa kyogou shite nai. Ya, mushiro kyoryoku shiyaeru yoni natte iru nda. That's right. Our clear conditions don't conflict. In fact, I'd say they're downright compatible. Watashi no clear jokin wa jibun wo chushin to shita itsutsu narabi no number ni kigai o kuwai nai da kara Haruna chan to wa kyogou shite nai yo. My clear condition is do not harm other players in two numbers more or less than your own, so we're compatible too. Shuhei and Kogami showed Haruna their PDAs. Indeed, their conditions were just as they said. You get it now? This means we don't have to fight each other. So I'm going to work together to win this game. Yeah, he's right. Three heads are better than two. When she saw the two of them smiling at her, Haruna felt her grip on the crossbow completely weaken. Do you get it? I suppose you're right. I've already injured you. There's no point of hurting you any further. So I see. That's good. Tokoro de Saki Dareka no Himega Kikoitaga. Moshka ste Oregai ni Motareka ni Kiga yo Kuaitanoka. By the way, we heard a scream just before we found you. Was that you hurting another player? Yes. Mariko. Moshka ste. You hurt her too bad, did you? She's fine. I aim for the leg. Oh, thank goodness. Wait a sec. Does that mean you have to injure just one more person to fulfill your clear condition? Yes. Oh good. Then your clear conditions is good as fulfilled then. Huh? I mean, if I let you injure me, that'll be the end of that, right? Hey, Kotomi! It's fine. But I'd appreciate if you tried not to make it too painful, Haruna. I can't do that. Huh? Huh? Mm, fine. I'll just pull off the pain. No, that's not what I meant. Huh? My clear condition comes with a special rule. The injured party must not be informed about the purpose of the injury beforehand. You already know my clear condition, so... Oh, I see. That's too bad. Let me heave a deep sigh. Huh? What's wrong, Haruna? You're an odd one, you know that? Most people wouldn't be disappointed about not needing to get hurt. Oh, really? 
<laughs> now that you mention it, I guess you're right. Kodumi gave a rather careless smile, perhaps because she hadn't accepted the reality of the game yet. Sensing harm in those apprehensions, Shuhei interjected. Anyway, we should get out of here. Mariko's screams might draw other players here. Huh? Wasn't that a good opportunity? I mean, we need to find other prime number players, right, Shu? Yeah. No. It's still too dangerous to come in contact with our players when we still know so little about this game. Yes, Shuhei's right. Come with me. I know a safe place we can talk. A safe place? It's this way. Follow me. But what am I hoping will come of this? The harm that questioned her actions, she nonetheless walked off with Shuhei and Kodumi in tow, leading into a mountain cabin in Area 5. Meanwhile, discuss with Mitsubayashi, who was acting on his own. Left the central control facility and saved one area to look for cubes. He pushed his way through a bush standing in his in his path. Found a 40 centimeter cube that reflected the sun. Found it. I see. So it appear the cubes are all hidden in places out of plain sight. That's for our regularities. They're at least 30 meters apart from each other, I suppose. But well, that said, I doubt they took geometry into account when placing these. Scassa pressed the open button on the cube as he organized the information he gathered during his search. This was the fifth memory chip he'd found. Assuming each area was about 200 square meters, it would be best for him to assume he'd already cleared out this one. Now then, I suppose we should try using one of these chips? Scott then inserted the memory chip into a special slot on his PDA and headed for the blip that appeared on his map. Carefully inspected the ground before he dug it up, but found no tra traces of digging. It's hidden so perfectly that you need the devil's luck to find and found memory chip, huh? Well, I guess it's more convenient for me this way. If even the simplest of rules failed, then it wouldn't be much of a game. Scusso took a look around, then picked up a fallen branch and dug up the soft leaf mold. Eventually, he found an aluminum can, as well as an object shaped like a bent L wrapped in oil paper. This is. Scusso picked up the object to confirm his budding suspicions. His slim fingers sunk under the weight he expected to feel.
He removed um the oil paper and, paper and found the pistol. Oh boy. I can't tell if I'm fortunate or unfortunate to find one of these at the very start. Scott's aside and prepared to pocket the gun. Okay, stop right there. Hey you, drop the gun. Huh? Scott's turned around to find a red haired girl leveling a gun at him. Her timing was too perfect. Almost like she'd been waiting for the best chance. I must admit, I'm surprised. I thought I was being cautious of my surroundings. No amateur has a perfect guard. Not when the forest filled with filled with all kinds of sounds, like the leaves blowing in the wind, or the sounds of bugs, or the hum of the river. Should I take that to mean you're not an amateur? Well, compared to you at least. Though she was being modest, this girl was clearly something special. She almost certainly been keeping an eye on Skasa for a while. So what now? What are you hoping to accomplish by showing yourself to me? Let's save the questions for after you've dropped the gun. Depending on your answer, I may do just that. Oh? You're being cautious of me? Having a gun pointed you tends to provoke that sort of reaction, yes? Got me there. But don't worry. My clear condition is all players survive, so I don't plan on killing you at least. Well now, so there's a condition like that, is there? But you can't buy trust with words alone. You're a real skeptic, aren't you? Yes, it's in my nature. Then how can I earn your trust? Good question. How about actually showing you your clear condition so we can see if you're being honest? Naturally, I'll show you mine as well. Scusso reached for the PDA in his pocket as naturally as possible. He figured he might be able to find a way out of this if he put a special function to good use. However, Stop right there. That won't be necessary. I can't have you pulling any stunts under my nose. Just so you know, I'm the kind of resource to any means possible to achieve my goals. So be a good boy and drop that gun. I won't hurt you if you do. Her words were kind, but her eyes were serious. She snuck up on Scusso without him noticing, was clearly used to handling a gun, and was cautious of his PDA. She was clearly um, one of the players that had been set up by the administrators. And with all the skills and information she had over him, Skulls had no means of resisting or negotiating with her. What's wrong? Need a little shot for proof? No, I'll do what you ask. 
Let's go outside as he dropped his pistol to the ground. Good. Now turn this way. Slowly. Show me your PDA next. Not being able to do anything was so very vexing. But Skasa had no choice but to obey her. However, at that moment... You are under no obligation to do as she says, Master Skasa. What? <laughs> the redhead girl took action as soon as that maid appeared without a sound. She turned around in an instant, aiming for the maid's thighs and firing without hesitation. The only thing the balls managed to scatter will do is scatter the leaf mold. The maid closed the gap in a second, swat and swatted the red hand's hand, redhead's hand away. At the same time, she punched the girl right in the stomach. The girl bent over, but kept her grip firmly on her gun. Skelsa didn't understand what was happening, but seized a chance to pull out his PDA. He quickly tried to use his special function to use the redhead zone. <laughs> but once she realized what Skasa was up to, the redhead immediately turned around and darted into a thicket. The maid looked ready to chase after her, but quickly gave up on that and turned to Skasa. Master Skasa, are you hurt? That concerned voice, and that reverent demeanor. Though her maid outfit was a large factor too, it was her actions that Skasa couldn't comprehend. Who are you? My name is Hitomi Kasuya. I see. You were the one hiding in the clean tools bin, weren't you? Yes. Please address me as Hitomi. Hitomi. Hitomi, huh? He's also continued operating his PDA. Shortly after, Hitomi's name and special function appeared on screen. Hitomi Kasuya. Send an email to a PDA within 100 meters. After sending one e email to a PDA, you can email that PDA again even when outside the designated range. It was exactly the same as when he checked it back at the conference room. Have you been following me the whole time? Yes. I have been watching over you from the shadows ever since you left the facility. So I had two people following me without my knowledge? I'm beginning to doubt my odds of surviving this game. Oh no. You need not be discouraged, Master Skasa. You displayed such stunning deduction power prowess during the briefing, and your turnabout against the administrator is nothing short of magnificent. There is no player out there who matches your brains. I'm grateful for your praise. But what is it you hope to gain? Why did you save me? When I was hiding in that cleaning tools bin, I became convinced that you were destined to be my master. I'm 
sorry, what? So do you Oops. Basically the same thing. Sorry, but I don't believe you. It makes no logical sense. Then how is it I may earn your trust? You'd only say the word, and I shall do whatever you ask. Whatever I ask, huh? Scott was having a hard time getting a read on Hitomi. Physical abilities were of merit, no question about that. But he couldn't see himself working with her. After thinking it over, Scott decided to give her a request she'd likely decline. Hitomi, I'm going to you to show Alright, Hitomi. And take off your clothes right now and show me you're not hiding any weapons. As you wish. A moment, please. Tommy began undoing her buttons out to slice him embarrassment. Her eyes displayed no hesitation either. Wait, stop. That's enough. So this are you quite certain? I can serve you in any way you desire. No, that won't be necessary. But in that case... Tommy gave Scott a look of bewilderment like none he'd ever seen before. It appeared she was serious about, um... Serving Scott as her master. Very well, Hitomi. Huh? If you want to consider me your master, then I won't stop you. Do you mean that? However, you'll let me act, act as I please. Do we have an accord? Yes, of course, master. There's clearly something wrong with Hitomi. But it was for the exact same reason he didn't want to push her. If he ended up on her bad side, her retaliation could be terrifying. Guess I better keep an eye on her? In the end, that was all um Scott's gonna do in his current situation. Meanwhile, as Gus and Hitomi formed their master-servant bond and began working together. Haruna Hosotani was leading Shuhei and Hitomi off a mountain on the northeastern side of the field. She decided to stay in the sunlight as much as possible, keeping a close eye on any shadowy areas. Every time she found a trace of a trap, she called her companion's attention to it. There's a black thread strung, strung up in the shade of that tree, so be careful. Yeah, got it. Kotomi, watch your step. Okay. Oh, this thread, right? Yes, that's it. Wow, I'm surprised you even noticed it. If I were on my own, I would have tripped all these traps for sure. It's not that hard to find them with the right knowledge. You sure do know a lot, Haruna. Especially about the rules of the game. Is that a problem? <laughs> I 
学校で勉強したことってこういう時あまり役に立たないから。No, no, no. You know what they say? Knowledge is power. Besides, stuff we learn in school won't be all that helpful here. So, I see. Harna had already told the two of them everything she was allowed to about the game, claiming she heard rumors of it. Shuhei clearly hadn't bought that explanation, but didn't seem like Kodomi held any doubts. So, in this case, Harna, why do you have to be so many flowers in this mountain? By the way, Harna, exactly why are there so many traps on this mountain? Maybe you didn't have to be so many flowers in this mountain. You didn't set them all up, did you? Of course not. These traps were here from the very start. It seems some of them are broken. Probably leftovers from the last time. Last time? So you mean this game's been played in the same place over and over again? Yes, though it's nothing more than a guess. I see. Hey, Shu, aren't you glad you managed to stay with Haruna? If she hadn't told us about the cubes and memory chips, we never would have had any clue. Yeah, you're right. Instantly, when we get to that safe place you were talking about, we're almost there. Look. Hard in the point ahead, where log cabin stood on a slightly exposed mountainside. Yamagoya ka. Kekko shikari shite so da na. A mountain cabin. Looks pretty sturdy. Yeah, we can finally take a good rest once we get there. Let's go. There shouldn't be any more traps past this point. Harunid led the pair to the hut, keeping her eyes peeled around them just in case she was wrong. And then, after the three shared the food and water Harunid procured and took a little breather. Okay, then, now what? Personally, I'd like to prioritize filling your guys' clear conditions. All I have to do for my clear conditions is not hurt certain people, so I'll be fine even if I don't do anything. True. What do you think, Haruna? Well, I'd like to perfect the defenses here first before we think about fulfilling our conditions. We don't know how long this game will last, or if there are any particularly dangerous players among us. Huh? But isn't that why we came to this cabin in the first place? There are still traps left, yes, but it's not enough. If we manage to make it past here, the main player for good nose on them will be able to get past these traps too. I guess you have a point. What should we do then? Set up more traps. Huh? Of course, we should disable the more lethal ones. Well, I think it'd be best to have a lot more traps that'll catch our players. Let us know when they're closing in. 
Doesn't mean our players can get hurt by them. Only break a few bones at worst. I think they should consider themselves lucky if they make it through of wounds that light. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Shu? Hmm. I'd say I agree with Haruna. Huh? Why? Two reasons. The first has to do with your clear condition. Not including me, if the 5, 7, and 8 turn out to be friendlies, your condition is as good as cleared. But if they happen to be dangerous players, you can't even act in self defense. I see. Yeah, just imagining that kind of scenario gives me the chills. Yeah. But if we set up traps, then we can at least prevent our players from getting the drop on us. The second reason is that it'll help Haruna fulfill her clear condition easier. Capturing and injuring them is safer for that player than getting shot with the crossbow out of the blue. Isn't that right, Haruna? Yes. How about Kotomi? Is that still not enough for you? No, I get it. But what about you? That covers me and Haruna, but it's still your condition to worry about. Don't you need to figure out who all the prime number players are? Yeah. No, not necessarily. Why is that? Like you. It's possible for me to fill my clear condition without doing anything. As long as the prime number of players fill their conditions on their own, that's enough. Don't worry, Katomi. With my PDA special function, I can get a basic understanding of what the other players are up to. If it still doesn't look like the prime number players have fulfilled their clear conditions by the time the end of the game draws near. Right. Then all we have to do is leave and help them out. Okay, got it. If you guys say so, I'll go with that. Alright, I think it's about time we got to work. Yeah. Haruna, please teach us about traps first. After that, you and I will dismantle the more dangerous traps and set up ones of our own. しゅうちゃん、私が。はい、わかった。もしその罠でプレイヤーが傷を負った場合、クリア条件に抵触するかもしれないだろう。If even so, make sure you pay attention to what Haruna tells us, okay? Yeah, I've got it. You sure? You may act all high and mighty because you're older than me sometimes, but you lack focus. Don't mess up and get caught up in one of our traps, okay? Shoot! 
Jesus, them fine shoe. <laughs> Sorry. Shuhei gave a playful smile, it's called me puffed her cheeks in irritation. But only Harvin that realized that his heart wasn't really in the smile. A while later, when the sun was beginning to set in the western skies, Harvin decided she laid out a nylon wire used for traps that she'd found in the hut. Probably call on to a lot by now. You might be coming over for a private talk any minute now. Just as she said that, Harmna heard something moving past the trees. When she turned around, she found exactly what she, who she'd been expecting to see. Speak of the devil. Huh? Did you know I'd be coming? Yes, for your personality, I figure it was only a matter of time. I see. That makes things quicker. And I'll cut right to the chase. Why do you know so much about this game? The truth this time. That's precisely what Haruna had expected, he asked. But there was no way she'd answer his question. What's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? Because I can't tell you. You can't tell me? Why? I can't tell you that either. Shuhei. There's no way I can tell you. Repeaters were bound by a rule that say they were under no circumstances to reveal the existence of the second stage during the first stage. If Harmoner were to break that rule, her collar would detonate mere seconds. A moment later, Shuhei nodded. Okay, I get it, Haruna. The problem is that you can't tell me, not that you won't tell me, isn't it? He gets it. That made Haruna very happy for some reason. It also signaled that she'd done enough. Hmm? I'll be going now. Go? And go where? I don't know. But at the very least, I shouldn't be here. Not any longer. What do you mean? I can't say that either. I don't want to say it. Shuhei, I've already played my part. You can protect Katomi on your own for the rest of the game, can't you? Wait, are you saying you already had this in mind when you say you take us here? No, I don't think so. Remember that I... Remember that I told you before? My head was a total mess. And I'm sure it still is. So I decided to leave you guys before I go off and do something stupid. Stop you from leaving? No, probably not. Will we never see each other again? 
今はわからないかなできるだけそうなるように頑張っては見るつもりだけど Well, no one knows what the future will hold But I plan to do my best to make it that way, yes I see But then why? Why'd you go so far for us? Good question. With a sad chuckle, Haruna turned her back on Shuhei and walked away. Just then, an old memory worked its way to the surface. Bye bye, Haruna! Bye, Haruna! Be happy! Harmona took one last look at her brother. Just like she used to do all the time back in those days. When Shuhei saw Harmona's face at that moment, his eyes trembled. His breath hitched in his throat. It can't be. Haruna, wait! Please stop! Haruna! The sudden change in Shuhei's behavior brought Haruna to a halt. Haruna, you said your last name was Hosotani, right? So that was it. That's what's been bugging me all this time. I finally get it. I know who you really are. You're Haruna, right? My little sister Haruna, right? What's wrong? Why won't you say anything? Because... I can't stay with you any longer. That's why I just decided. No, I won't let you leave. We're finally back together after all this time, so why do you have to be separated all over again? I don't care how you got mixed up in this game anymore. So please, don't go. Don't leave me again. Harmona was frozen by Shuhei's painful embrace. His warmth seeped into her. You're so cruel, big brother. If you can say that now... Why didn't you say the same thing back then? I didn't want to leave you either back then. And I still don't want to. Before she knew it, Harmona was sobbing into the chest of her long-lost brother. And with that, she knew as much as her heart want, her mind wanted to fight it, this is where her heart wanted to be. Alright, so we're gonna end the stream here for now. So, um... Yeah, moving out things quite along now we've got all the Info all the way from the first route, so 
And as we can already see, there's a bunch of different ch change-ups and formations coming on, so... We'll see how that will affect things. We'll, no, we'll have to wait until next time, so until then, I'll see you all later.